How would you describe your learning experience throughout school, elementary to high school? Was it fun? Was it exciting? Was it interesting? No, to all of the above, no. Because I was raised by uh, an immigrant family, they came from the Philippines, I, they taught me two languages at once. I was thought I was dumb for the longest time. Um, high school was awful. Uh, just because I had moved across the country and then it was a big transition. Okay, so what were your favorite subjects and what were your least favorite subjects? I think math. Math was my favorite subject. I'm horrible at math. I don't like math. My very least favorite subject was math. I feel like that's a lot of people's. If you could change one thing about your education, what would it be? More uh, like life skill courses, like how to do your taxes. I would say no homework, definitely. I would change how they uh, teach us about black history. Uh, they only teach us what they want to teach us. Like we only know about the basics like Martin Luther King and Rosa Parks. We're going to show you videos that highlight what education was like years ago. Okay. And then we're going to also show you videos of what education is like in more recent years across various subjects. And you're going to react to how similar or how different to your own educational experience these curriculums are. This is great. How fun. Now listen up. My very eager mother just served us nine pizzas. Ooh, yum. This is very busy. Hey, if you were in elementary school before 2006, there's a good chance you had to memorize something similar to that sentence. This mnemonic device was used to teach children the, the order of the planets in our solar system. Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, also pronounced Uranus. Yeah, you can't hide from it either way. <laughs> and finally, Neptune and Pluto. And Neptune and Pluto. Pluto is, should still be a planet. When you were growing up, did you learn that Pluto was a planet? Oh, absolutely. I was, you know, part of the change. So it was, I had both. Uh, the only thing I remember them saying is that Pluto is no longer considered a planet. It was like a, a dwarf planet. I don't even remember memorizing the planets. I'm sure we did. I cheated a lot. <laughs> Sharon, let's look at what kids are learning these days. Now, if you're currently in elementary school, you might be saying, wait, there were nine planets? Before going back to playing Fortnite Go or whatever kids are into these days. So what happened to Pluto? It's not like it's gone anywhere. <laughs> it's still out there on the edge of the solar system. So what changed? Well, Pluto hasn't, but our understanding of it has. We know way more about space than we did 100 years ago. Whatever definition science eventually settles on, sadly, Pluto probably won't be on it. So Pluto is no longer a planet. What, what are your thoughts about how that's changed mm -hmm. since you were growing up? Yeah, so the real lesson there was, you know, things can change all the time. You know, fact is fact until it isn't. My life is no different the day before they said Pluto is not a planet than it was the day after. So I don't care. But I do remember vividly them saying Pluto is no longer a planet. Like, I think it was when we were in school, that's when they, they started changing it. So for me, it just feels arbitrary that Pluto is just no longer a planet. And I think they're trying to compensate it by calling it a dwarf planet. It's like, so it's still a planet. How was civil rights education incorporated into your curriculum? I feel like they should have made it not so more so much from a white man's point of view and more so from a black person's point of view. On Martin Luther King Day, they'll tell us like, he was a good person and we watch like a short video on him and like, that's probably about it. Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, um, W.E.B. Du Bois, a lot of Latino history, uh, also some Asian American history, which was really nice. So I had a lot of that background. We're gonna look at the then, and then we're gonna look at how history has kind of corrected itself regarding one particular civil rights um, heroine. Rosa Parks. Iconic activist Rosa Parks had a huge part to play in the history of the American Civil Rights Movement when she bravely refused to give up her seat on a segregated bus in Montgomery, Alabama on December 1st, 1955. Many of us may have learned about how this fatigued ordinary woman refused to give up her seat in the all-white section of the bus at the end of a long day and accidentally became the mother of the Civil Rights Movement as we know it. But that story isn't necessarily true. Okay, what do you remember about learning about Rosa Parks? Not much. I mean, let's be real. 
We didn't even have Black History Month. Yeah, that's basically what they taught us. Like, she refused to give up her seat. But but who knows? Maybe maybe there's something even more to it that I still don't know. Darkening Eve of December 1st, she was sat in the front row of the middle section of the bus designated for African American or colored riders when the bus became packed with passengers and a white man was left standing. At this point, Miss Parks and three other black passengers were instructed by the driver to give up their seats to other white passengers. So it wasn't as if she was being purposefully disobedient in defiance of the rules like many of us are taught. She was following the rules by not being in the all-white section, but she refused and was arrested after the driver's request meant she could no longer stand for such harsh treatment. So had you ever learned that she was actually sitting in the segregated part of the bus, but then was asked to get up from the black part of the bus? I never knew that. I just like kind of took my school's curriculum word for it. That's a pretty good detail to include in there. And, and you know, I'm glad that they fixed it. And hopefully with other examples like this, they continue to do the same thing. The male whitewashing of history is just nauseating. Do you think that civil rights education should be incorporated into your middle school curriculum? Definitely. I mean, if people, people face like uh, racism and discrimination in middle school and people face it even younger and so why shouldn't other people have to learn about it if other people have to face it? It's, uh, it's kind of weird to like they're too young to learn about it um, then people should be too young to face it, you know? <laughs> what were your PE classes like in high school and like how much did you participate? Oh I was big participant. Do you feel that you and your classmates are enthusiastic about participating in PE? No. It actually like got my blood flowing and then me pumped in the morning for school, so I was like already ready to go. Okay, well let's look at what early 1960s JFK wanted all high schools to look like. And there were about 4,000 high schools that looked like the high school we're getting ready to look at. Okay. They had a classical sense going all the way back to the Greek era of what it took to move the body well without injury. Oh, but nope, we didn't do that. Movement and control. Well, we've oh, been geez. able in the short space of no, two or three months. this is not PE, this is bodybuilding. Change the physical <laughs> Those are high school guys? Of our children. Not at my high school. This will spread to every school district in <laughs> the United States. Jesus. Dang. All that looks like the whole school, not just one so class. Doing, we'll be wow, look at that. And happier ones. Oh my gosh, that is so dumb. We need to bring this back. We need to bring this back. None of that was happening at our high school. I'd be so down if everyone was in the spirit, like if that was the zeitgeist of like, yeah, like exercise. If they were like, okay, now you have to do like pull-ups, like all together, we have to do like sit-ups. I'm not doing that. I don't care what they say. I'm like, I'm gonna saw my arm off. I would start a movement to take that away. Give me the F on my PE form. I don't think college is gonna care. So let's take a look at what the average high school class, PE class looks like now. Okay, so that's agility training. Yeah. Oh, quick feet, quick feet. <laughs> quick feet, quick feet. Aw, I don't want to make... I mean, hey, man, they're having fun, but yeah, it's for sure not on the same level. So where, where does your experience fall on the spectrum? Well, I would say it's probably pretty close to this. I get technically this is physical education. I don't know how much benefit you get from it. Getting the kids up and off their feet and active in any way, shape, or form, I feel like that's fine, so. What do you remember about sex education in school? I mean, they taught like, this is the guy, this is the woman, this is how it all works. They somehow explained sex without showing body parts. Let's look at what the, um, the Irish Catholic sex education videos <laughs> from the 80s. They have the penis. Which is like They're just they didn't show us a penis. And this is more explicit than what I've been taught. Like John Williams. John Will <laughs> we call it its real name, penis. But God has made it really lovely. So much so that people are tempted to do it before they're married. Well, that's just an ordinary human temptation. <laughs> God doesn't want people to have sexual intercourse before they're married. Yeah, that seems right. <laughs> Why, sister, come on. I mean, I go to private school, so I'm probably gonna get a video like that. So were you taught abstinence? Were you taught that sex was for marriage? Uh, I was, but I also grew, grew up in a religious um, like household. Uh, they didn't teach us about periods. They didn't teach us about like the, the female production system. Uh, my grandmom, thankfully, she taught me a lot. <laughs> There's like this test you have to take. 
about religion in fourth grade and eighth grade, and they ask you questions like, are you going to have sex before marriage? It's more laughable. And then they're like, you guys aren't mature enough. I thought you guys would be better. I thought you guys would be even more mature. I'm like, I'm, a, I'm 13 years old. So let's look at what kids in different parts of the country are learning now when it comes to sex ed. Okay. Sex ed is super controversial and all over the place. Different states teach sex ed way differently, and some places don't even teach it at all. The federal government doesn't require any sex ed to be taught in any really specific way. Different states have different requirements, and some states don't even want to teach it at all. So let's say you're living in Arkansas. According to the state's law, your sex ed is probably more along the lines of learning stuff like only safe sex is no sex. You should only have sex if you're married right. and there's not much to talk about birth control. And if you live in California, your sex ed is gonna look very different, covering all kinds of things, from birth control, to consent, to gender identity, and more. Like, we weren't really taught that. Gender identity we weren't taught. Con con consent we weren't taught, we're crazy enough. But it's good, it's definitely good to, to deep, deep dive into that subject and really understand what consent really means. Yeah, it surprises me, because they didn't teach me that. <laughs> I should go back to high school and learn that stuff. The weird thing is, they haven't talked about any of like consent or gender identity or uh, like other stuff like that, but we have talked about abortion since sixth grade. We didn't have discussions, they just told us about like Roe v. Wade, but stuff like that, they, they've talked to us about it a lot, but they definitely have a more um, like religious outlook on it because I do go to a like private school. What did you learn today that you might not have known before? I mean, the Rosa Parks thing, I did not know uh, that additional detail, which was cool that she was actually sitting in a segregated seat already. Based on these videos, would you say that education has evolved for the better, gotten worse, or is it about the same? I think that in some areas it's faltered and in some areas it has uh, improved. I would say it's definitely gotten better. It seems the same to me. It doesn't seem like they changed much about like, anything. I mean, from what I know, I feel like it's pretty much the same, maybe a little bit better. Education needs to be more about how to participate, participate in a world um, as a good citizen. If you valued education as much as we pretend to say we do, then you would give it to everyone. And you don't. Education, a good education, is isolated to privileged people. I feel like birth control is a is a top tier thing to talk about because a lot of females don't know about it and like what it does to your body. If you're gonna be teaching a bunch of impressionable like seventh graders and sixth graders, you have to be accurate or else the rest of their life they're gonna be thinking the wrong information. And also, we definitely need to freaking bring back JFK PE, dude. Heck yeah. Thanks for watching this episode of React. If you like this video, make sure you hit the like button. What are your thoughts on education then versus now? Let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching. See you next time. We don't need no education. Parents, leave those kids alone.